Hi, perfect competition. Perfect competition is a market structure defined by four characteristics. It's a market where there is perfect knowledge for all the buyers and sellers. For buyers that means uh, they know all prices and all the availability of all goods in the market. For sellers there are no production secrets. All producers, new or old, can produce the same quality goods. Second characteristic, there is a large number of buyers and sellers, none of which is big enough to influence the market. Thirdly, there are no barriers to entry. And fourthly, the goods produced in a perfectly competitive market are homogenous, absolutely identical to each other, which means there's no brand loyalty. Now that lack of brand loyalty leads to a perfectly elastic demand curve. A perfectly elastic demand curve, horizontal, for price P, were was the price put up beyond price P, the firm would lose all its customers. Perfectly elastic demand. Uh, this, is the, this is what the firm sees, the firm. So an elastic demand curve, which is also the AR curve, and it's also the MR curve. Every time they sell another unit, the same amount of revenue, extra revenue, comes in. So the marginal revenue is also horizontal on top of the AR curve. That's unusual, it's unique to this kind of market structure. In other market structures, the AR slopes downwards, the MR twice as steep, but not in perfect competition. We have an MC curve, as usual, and we have an AC curve. Now, I'm going to draw the AC curve as if this industry is making, uh, this firm is making abnormal profits, which is possible in the short run, only in the short run. So if I draw the AC curve something like this, AC, we can see that at the MC MR point, here is where they would produce, quantity Q, charging price P, and the AC is there, the AR is there, they're making abnormal profits of this, of this quantity. And if the price is here, then in the industry as a whole, perhaps the supply and demand is something like this, and this is the industry total at price P. The price on the vertical axis, of course, quantity on the horizontal axis. So, the market may, may allow firms to make abnormal profit in the short run, but only in the short run, because what happens in perfect competition, if firms are making abnormal profit, as they are here, is that new entrants would enter the market, there's no production techniques, there's no secrets, there's perfect knowledge, and there's no barriers to entry to stop them coming in, so new firms will enter the industry attracted by the abnormal profits. As they enter the industry, the supply in the industry expands driving down the price. And as the price falls, so the abnormal profits for individual firms are eroded. And we, lead, we are left with the long-run equilibrium position, which um, does not allow uh, abnormal profits. Now I'm going to tidy this up, uh, leaving just price two. So bear with me as I rub out this and replace it with the long-run equilibrium at price 2. There's the MC, there's the AC. This is the AR and the MR. There's the quantity. And as you can see now, uh, not only is there no abnormal profits, this is now the long-run equilibrium. Not only is there uh, abnormal profit, uh, no abnormal profits, um, but also because we see that at the, at the level of output production is at the lowest possible point on the AC, that shows that there is productive efficiency. What's more, because the last unit made, firms allocated the same amount of extra cost as, as customers allocated the same amount of extra revenue, um, at the price, uh, there is also allocative efficiency in this market structure. It's the only kind of market structure where you get both productive and allocative efficiency occurring when the firm is profit maximizing. That's perfect competition in the long run. I showed you the case where the new firms were entered into the industry expanding the supply, driving the price down and eroding the profits. But this position is also reached where firms would be making a loss. If firms were making a loss in perfect competition, some firms would have been driven out of the industry. The supply would have decreased, driving up the price to a point uh, equal to this. So whether there's too many firms or too few firms, um, the long run equilibrium is here when there's just the right number of firms and no abnormal profits can be made. So there's no incentive for new firms to enter. There's no, there's no reason why firms will be pushed out of this industry either. 
Uh, one final point worth noting is that when there had been profits being made in the short run, as I showed earlier, and supply increased, it's interesting to note that that increased the, the industry supply, but it decreased each individual firm's uh, quantity. That's quite unusual. Uh, I know that some people find that hard to, to follow, but the industry supply increased, but the price was driven down and each firm actually made less itself, even though the whole industry's supply increased. That's sometimes a question on the A level. Um, okay, so I hope that helped you understand perfect competition. Oh, one more point. Uh, is, are there really industries that are perfectly competitive? Some agricultural um, goods can be argued to be perfectly competitive. Um, one story I liked was uh, someone I know went to a, a, a Laiki, which is a Greek market, and bought potatoes from five different stores, five potatoes from five different stores, 25 potatoes, put them all in a bag, went back to the first supplier, the first potato seller, and said, which five potatoes did you, did I buy from you? And the potato seller couldn't pick the same five. It seems to indicate homogenous goods. When the, when the supplier who supplied the product five minutes earlier couldn't even pick out his own product that he sold. I like that example as something which maybe um, shows that the potato market here in Greece could be argued to be um, perfectly competitive. Some people say that foreign exchange uh, markets are perfectly competitive because uh, perhaps you could argue that the goods homogenous. After all, if you sell dollars um, and another foreign exchange dealer supplies dollars, the dollars are homogenous. But you can argue about barriers to entry there. Um, anyway, but the, the, that it isn't really important if this is a real uh, really exists. What is important is we see it as a theoretical extreme, and we can judge the. Uh, how closely real-world industries approximate to this, even if they're not truly perfectly competitive. Okay? Thanks very much.